Hello everybody and today I am going to show you the, the game that made Magnus Carlsen a Grandmaster. Uh, so he was playing uh, against uh, Surya Ganguly in the 7th round of Dubai Open in 2004. He had the white pieces and yeah, let's get into it. So they started off with d4, Magnus played d4, knight f6 and bishop d5. <coughs> Magnus <coughs> started with Stampowski, knight e4, main move, bishop f4, c5. F3. So far everything is theory. Uh, then uh, he's open play knight f6. Uh, the most common line is queen to a5 and then after c3 you just develop your knight and then the position after like queen b6 it is fine. Because in the game after knight f6 Magnus took a pawn and then b6 which is a very interesting move, somewhat like a, actually not somewhat, it is a gambit, which isn't really a gambit. So there are two other options, there is queen a5, and then white gets a very good development. Uh, as you can see, white pieces are very well developed, uh, all of their pieces are already very well developed, and black's pieces are very slow developing, because they spend a lot of time moving the f6 knight, they play like knight f6, here and then back, so white has development advantage, uh, and then something like this, I think white is slightly better, even though the game they, uh, which happened here, black won, but I think white is quite nice, there were some other moves like knight h3, but okay, that's queen e5, uh, getting the pawn back immediately. Then there also is an interesting move, knight a6, also quite exciting, let's say. Um, the same thing, you want to get this pawn, but instead of queen, you want to develop your knight. So e4, knight c5, knight c3. Uh, this is also interesting, but here, to be honest, I prefer white even more, because there, here the queen is in black's way in this kind of stuff. So I think queen e5 would be a little bit better for black, because when they develop the pieces, they develop all the pieces, and then they also develop bishop, and then they can castle at some point. But then they also have to spend time with developing the queen. But okay, uh, he's open to play b6, and then Magnus played a very interesting move, knight to c3. Um, it is because b6 is another way to get a pawn back because pretty much after takes takes uh, black hat gets a very good very good compensation for that pawn because then they can play su oops, uh, super active and then oops sorry and then they can get a very good play uh, so yeah Magnus didn't take uh, he played knight c3 very nice development move another move was e4 I was once played, um, and then they got something like this, knight d5, king of 2, very, very sharp position, uh, why it doesn't have a castle, but more or less they are fine, and then this end game, I think, ended in a draw, but I like knight c3 much, much more, and now he plays e4, and then his opponent plays d6, which is a novelty. Uh, before, black played knight c6, and then after bishop c4, then they played d6, uh, now e5, that something similar happened in the game, only without including knight c6, bishop c4. Uh, and still, white is slightly better, because of very bad position of black skin and pawn. Uh, but yeah, and the game is open play d6, and I minus found a really nice move e5, because um, black is pretty much forced to take. Um, they could have played knight h5, but that would be a mistake because of queen d5. And then if black takes the bishop on a4, we take the rook and we are an exchange up, completely win position, much better development. Why is just winning? So his opponent took d takes e, Magnus took, um, takes, and then castle. Also very important that it is Swiss check. Uh, you, so his opponent has to waste time playing knight d7. And then we take. And so far, um, Magnus got his pawn back. And as you can see, his development is much, much better. His pieces are just much better than his opponent's pieces because most of his opponent's pieces just cannot really move. Uh, so Magnus is already slightly better. Bishop b7. Um, pretty much uh, like the move his opponent had to play. Another alternative was a6, but then knight h3, bishop g3, and then the king is still stuck in the center of the board. Magnus gets this. Some 96 ideas, Magnus is just better. 
So yeah, it's open to play bishop b7, knight h3. Magnus wants to get like knight g5, bishop f4, you know, or maybe even bishop b5 attacking his open at skin. It's open to play king c8. Mm. A6 was an option here as well, and then go king e8. Uh, with a worse but a solid position for black, because they at least more solid, you know. All their key, all their pieces stick together. They can play like rook d8 or rook c8. They should be. They are worse, of course. White pieces are much much better, but I think it's better than in the game. Okay, in the game, king c8 was played by his opponent. Magnus played bishop g3. With the idea of knight g5 and the knight f7 winning this weak pawn. So his opponent played h6, preventing knight g5. g6 was an interesting option as well. Uh, but then uh, Magnus would play bishop c4 and then knight b5. And then his idea is just to trade uh, the knight for the bishop on d6. And then the dark squares in his opening position would be super weak. He would get knight g5 attack in these pawns and he would be much better. So his opponent played h6. He played bishop c4 e6 protecting the pawn, knight f4. And bishop e7 was an accuracy. Um, but it is a very human move, I think, because, I mean, if you look from black's perspective, white's pieces are so incredibly good, right? Maybe even some, not mating attacks, but some very unpleasant positions. So bishop e7, in my, in my opinion, is a very human move, but it ended up being an inaccuracy. But it was knight b6 and then bishop b7 with the idea to push the bishop away uh, because in the game uh, his opponent magnus opponent couldn't do that because of some very very cool stuff another interesting idea instead of returning the bishop was knight to e6 ftx bishop e6 sacrificing a knight for two pawns uh, but then with some very very precise play g5 rook h7 the only way to protect the knight knight e4 this c4 then black gets to get their bishop out with bishop c5, even though it's very, very unpleasant, but I think they should be fine. So he's open to play bishop e7, and Magnus played a very nice move, knight to b5. So now it is very, very scary to get like knight d6, um, and pretty much, I think, now if knight b6, yeah, if knight b6 now, then there is a very nice sacrifice, bishop e6, and you go knight g6, Rook e8, knight e7, knight e6, knight f5, knight g7, and Magnus is completely winning. This pawn is a complete weakness, this rook is a complete weakness, so for example, if the king moves, then you can take the rook, and then Magnus has three pawns for, uh, three pawns and a rook for versus two minor pieces. Magnus is much better after king c8, he can even play knight d8 and then keep his opening with two knights, and he's much, much better. Very nice line, very cool sacrifice. And then if king c7 here, then we get knight f5 winning the rook as well. Uh, and yeah, he would be much better. So he often played g5, pretty much the only move. Uh, well, maybe not the only move, but yeah, knight b6 is more, so a nice move. Okay, knight d3, bishop d5. There was also knight e8, but then there is nice move knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5, rook g8. Then Magnus can just play h3, knight a3, with knight a4, knight b6 idea, uh, with a fork. And he is just much better. Dark square is very weak. Um, and yeah, he just has much more space, much better piece development, and he's much better. Uh, another option for black was instead of bishop d5, which happened in the game, was g4. But then Magnus gets knight c7. He's winning an exchange. Uh, and then uh, a force line, rook g1. Okay, black has to take the knight, and Magnus checks. Uh, only move. Okay, not the only move. There was king d8, but this cannot really be good. There is at least like knight f4 getting a pawn, or even like knight e5. And if king e8 you take, take bishop b5, winning the knight because it's pinned and it's game over. So if this is bishop b7, Magnus would have just taken rook g2. Uh, he has an exchange, he's open and has a pawn, but he's still much, much better. Since again bishop d5 happened, Magnus traded the bishops away and then rook h1. His idea is just simple to get knight e5 or something. He's open to place a6. Um, yeah, they're trying to simplify the position to trade the knights of the board. Uh, the knight for the dark square bishop. Uh, another interesting idea was c4. And then you get rook d8. And now a6 can be an idea because why it doesn't get knight d6. Uh, but Magnus would go rook e4, knight c7, and he would win a pawn with a very nice move, knight e6, because now if rook b7, he just moves the knight, he's an extra pawn up. Uh, and if ftxc, he just takes rook e6, 
the bishop hangs, the pawn hangs is much better. All right, so uh, he's open played a6, he played 96. He traded the knight for a dark square bishop and then he got 95. Uh, then before was an interesting option, but 95 is a much stronger move as well. Uh, yeah, you could have tried, but then very nice idea, king d7, rook h8, and black gets a pretty good position, so uh, minus played 95, bishop e5, rook d8. Uh, interesting move was f6, uh, but then bishop d4, rook e8, b3, and then takes, takes, Magnus gets c4, if the knight moves, if the knight moves like anywhere, right, oops, if the knight moves anywhere, we just take this weakness on f6, so, and if he plays e5, we take, we take rook d5, we are completely winning, so f6 doesn't really work, because b3 is a very, very nice move, okay, he's open and played rook d8, he played rook e4, attacking this pawn, it's open and play knight b6. The idea of force is to protect the pawn. There was king b7 uh, with the idea of sacrificing the pawn for at least some peace play, but it didn't work because of rook e1. Now the knight hangs, and if the knight takes the pawn even, we take rook e6. Um, and then if the king moves, we f6 is a weakness, we are much, much better, even close to winning. So he's open and play knight b6, protecting the pawn. Then Magnus traded the rooks, and then suddenly he has bishop g7. And then uh, now. Now, this uh, h6 pawn is a weakness, and if he's open and plays h5, then we just get bishop f6, and then bishop g5, and we are a pawn up. And if rook g8, we get like h4, and we are healthy pawn up. So he's open and played king e7, uh, we played bishop to h6, he played, he's open and played f6, there was rook g8, but then after rook g4, f6, h4, we have three attackers on this pawn, and he has two defenders. Mm, he has two defenders, we would just win a second pawn that's completely winning. So he's only played f6, he just played h4, trading the pawns off. Now as well, this pawn is a weakness, we can just play, say, like bishop b3, attacking the knight. And if the knight moves, this pawn is a weakness. Yeah, so white already has an extra pawn, and the c4 pawn is another huge weakness. He's only plays rook h8, mm, of course. A nice move, pinning the bishop, but then Magnus finds even nicer move, bishop to g5. The idea is if takes, takes, is just a pawn up in a very good endgame, and all his open and spawn are another weaknesses. I think very close to winning. So he's open and played rook g8, and then bishop e3. The idea is, uh, if rook takes, the knight hangs, so his open has to go knight d5. Oops, knight d5. Okay, uh, it was another interesting idea, rook h7, but, and then taking f6, but then black gets our uh, quite active pieces, because, you see, now our king is somewhat bad, this rook is on the second rank, it's very strong, then his idea is like knight before, and our pawns can be weaknesses, so bishop e3 is a much, much better move, knight e5, bishop c5, king d7, now he took, uh, the only difference is, uh, with this position is that his skin is less active and our rook is more active right here because here and he also has a very unpleasant pawn for us so yeah rook g2 rook g4 magnus is very fine with a rook j because the end game after this this bishop of two is completely winning for him because uh yeah he just will push his pawns he would win the game quite easily he's open played rook h2 and a nice move c4 Knight has to go to c7, uh, rook d4 check, king c6, bishop b4. Now I'm going to say, yeah, guys, rook d6, um, because these pawns are still completely weak. Compare Magnus's pawns, okay, f3 is a weakness, but there is just one weakness, and his opponent's pawns, which are completely, completely weak, and that is, looks like it's just game over. So I'm going to play rook f2, trying to attack the pawn. Another option was rook in knight e8, but he would run to rook d8. Rook e8 trading the minor pieces, then rook e4, Magnus, two points up, game over. Completely win position for him. So he's open, played rook f2, rook d6, bishop a5. The idea is rook d7, rook c7, uh, because, yeah, if you play rook d7, the knight is completely pinned, and he cannot move the king or the knight, and we would just win the knight. So he's open, played rook f1. Okay, knight e8 was an option, but then we just take c5. The knight is just stuck in the corner. Nothing he can do, it's completely win for us. So he's open played rook f1, king d2, king e3. Now, oops, now if rook b2, we get rook d7, win the knight, and he is, as he's open played rook c2, uh, king d3, 
and then Rook C1 was played by his opponent, um, and he resigned. Pretty much, he didn't even wait for a reply from from Magnus. I think he resigned because Magnus now just has Bishop to C7, Rook E6, and eaten both the pawns. Pawns are completely, completely weak, and yeah, that's completely winning. So after Rook C1, he's open and just resigned. So that was a very, very nice game with starting off with this e5 and then just playing positionally just having much better piece play all the game it was a very very extremely well played game from him from magnus and yeah that is how he became the g a grandmaster then he drew two games secured the gm norm he also got a second place in this tournament which is a super strong tournament with six and a half points and that is how he earned his third norm he already had the rating as you can see he had 25 52 so he earned the third norm and then soon after he became a grandmaster and yeah that is how he became a grandmaster i really hope you guys liked the game and the video uh, please review, uh, leave review in the comments and yeah everybody I'll see you all the next time next time take care everybody and bye bye